foggy day. Like that. It's more like uh, the feeling in my mouth after I've uh, 
smoked a bowl of this is like I've eaten too many corn chips. Just leaves my mouth feeling just a little bit rough. It doesn't last very long. I am enjoying it. I'm going to smoke through the whole tent. I'm not going to jar this. Okay, I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna smoke the whole 10, but it's not really my deal. Guy damn near ran into my bumper behind me here. Settle down, fella. flipped off when he drove by, so I just waved back at him. Have a nice day, Philip. 
best way to deal with that so I don't get upset. <laughs> expectations for pipe tobacco blends based on things other people say and because what they're experiencing is very likely different from what I'm going to experience but this blend comes from back in the day when I did have expectations about how a blend would taste and how good it would be based on what other people said I don't do that anymore or it's very rare there's there's a few people that I know our tastes kind of line up and when they say something is good, then I'll likely try it, maybe. But this one comes from back in the in the days when I used to believe the hype. So this blend is kind of it's not, it's kind of like you know that, that idea that you don't ever want to really meet your heroes, you know, because they might turn out to be uh, not all they were hyped up to be. <clears throat> well, this blend wasn't a hero of mine. meet my, my expectations of what I thought it would be, which is which is good because it's it's silly to have those kind of expectations. But it was a much talked about blend back then. So I know that doesn't sound like a glowing review, right? I think it's quite good for what it is. It's just not what I'm interested in. So in my last video, I, I asked if people can detect that something is going to that a tobacco blend is going to bite their tongue from the, the tin note. And the reason I bring that up is because it's something that I realized I was doing quite a few years ago. I realized I could smell whatever it is in the tin that's going to, in the tobacco that's going to bite me. And I'm going to say I've got Sometimes I think it's real high percentage that I could do that, and sometimes it's probably realistically around 70 or 80 percent uh, accuracy rate with smelling a tobacco and knowing if it's going to bite me. And some people are lucky, they don't get tongue bite. Other folks get tongue bite from smoking too hot or uh, from not, from the tobacco being too wet or literally getting a steam burn. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that chemical reaction. Some tobaccos have... It's either an additive or... I think that's what it is in production tobaccos. I'm not quite sure what the additive is. It may just be some kind of sugar. But I have gotten tongue bite smoking uncured leaf, and that was ammonia. I don't think is what I'm protecting and, and uh, I don't think that's what's burning me in production tobacco. So I don't get tongue bite all the time. I used to. It's very rare these days and I don't tend to smoke things that do that. I would like to enjoy my smokes. I don't want to be enjoying the taste but in pain. You know, I don't want to burn my tongue so I don't, I don't smoke things that do that. But I was one, I was just wondering if other folks have that have noticed that they can do that too, or if that's just some unique thing that I've developed over the years from being particularly apprehensive about getting tongue bite. 
I, I do have a very good sense of smell. Uh, I'm kind of known for it. So I don't know if maybe that if maybe that's what's going on and it's just like my personal superpower or what. I'm sure there's probably other people that can do that also. Either way, it's very useful to me because I, I'll pretty much know right away smell something and especially if I if I go to a pipe shop or if I meet up with other uh, pipe smokers in fact I think the first time that I really noticed that I was doing that was sitting in Codgerville and uh, some of you folks who remember the artful Codger he had a pretty neat uh, basement set up called Codgerville and I was visiting him one time and I think that's when I first really noticed that I was doing that. I was smelling some tobaccos he was showing me. So that's what I was wondering about. So I've got three tens open right now and I'm just smoking through these tens. I already talked about uh, this one which only has one flake left in it and which is the fourth generation 1931 flake. Just covered the Bill Bailey's Balkan blend, which is just kind of fun to say. And the other one that I've had open for at least two weeks now, maybe more, is Cornell and Deal Briar Fox. So I'm going to talk about this one next. And I'm working quite a bit, and I'm not home in the daytime. tomorrow I can get a video out on that one maybe the next day get it uploaded that's the idea anyway so most folks check out of my videos somewhere between the eight and nine minute mark so anybody that's still hanging out have a wonderful holiday Christmas and if I don't see you New Year's You're all doing well. Get outside. I need to do that also.